701 Centerville Avenue. It's provided by others, it's not included in this plan. 
but there is a cost associated with it. There is a cost associated with that. And that cost, is, I believe the council should know the cost as being part of the overall project that we're giving to them. And I don't have the only thing that's not really included is the plaque, right? Yeah, we picked up all of our the square plaque. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was told that the parks department was actually going to pay for that. That's not That's Okay. They do in all cases assume that. So, but there's a cost associated with that also. That yeah, that'll be revealed once we get to that part. Right. Um, which department fund or TIF is going to be paying for the provided by other items? In other words, there's, there's a cost. Somebody's going to have to pay for these items that aren't on the bid. Is that going to come out of TIF 3? The, the, the bridge will be, will be covered out of TIF 3. Okay. All of the electrical is part of the bid. Like the 200 amp family you mentioned, that's yeah. included in the restroom building itself. So provided by others would be the restroom company. In the pure gas building, that comes with the electrical panel. It's already included with it. That would have been on that. It was included. Is that panel also being used for the parking lot lights and things like that? Part of the aerator it would be. I know okay. not. I think it's included as part of this. Or is that just for the restroom? Well, we, that's minor. Um, let me talk briefly about the Metro Parks grant. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. This Metro Park grant looks, walks, and quacks like a Procter & Gamble mail-in rebate. The city must pay for everything up front, then tally all of the receipts, mail them to the Metro Parks District, <coughs> then and only then will the Parks District review the expenditures and issue a rebate check to the city. When the, when the Parks Department receives this rebate check, what account will be credited with the deposit? It's going to go towards the project. The project's already going to be paid for. You have to do this after the project's uh, already it's, done. It's going to go towards the... the, the we itemize what we submitted in the grant, and it comes to about $93,000. But they will be... Right. Well, what I'm saying is that according to the grant, the city has to pay for everything up front. <coughs> and then 25% is free. Right. When they get that check, is it going to be deposited in, a de in the Parks Department fund? They'll get put back into the fund that it was taken out of. They'll get back put into the fund that was taken out of. And let me, let, let me just clarify one thing, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Debbie and the rest of you speak up, Jim. This is not uncommon with many grants. Yeah, in fact, we have a long history with the Metro Parks Department. They've always done it that way. Well, I'm not saying it's uncommon. I'm saying that the impression that I had was that the grant money was just there to, you know, up front. We, we have been approved, and right. the, the whole, the, the specific projects have been approved. And as we, as we move forward and, and document the proof of those, we will be refunded as we have been in the past with those similar type grants. Okay. Almost all grants that we do, yes. we have to pay and, and wherever we pay that money out of is that's where it's reimbursed. So, so we'll go back to tip, tip three. three. It'll go back into tip three. That's the answer I wanted. That's exactly what happens. Okay. Um, quick review of the project cost. We've already spent $104,000 out of the Kimball money. There's the $845,000 MEPA bid, unknown number of estimated provided by others. Now the two hundred and fifty dollars for the bridge. Um, so we're at $1,149,000 as the current cost of this project. Uh, we'll less the 400,000 Kimball, the 93,000 Park Grant. Um, do quick math here. $706,000 is going to have to come out of TIF 3. It's whatever that's been budgeted, whatever is there, it's been talked about for a long time. Okay. I just want, I mean, before we're talking. And some of it's still for next, the next year's budget. Yeah, 250,000 is right, next year. Right. So 456,000. Minimum coming out of TIF three this year, or TIFs three and sixteen this year. Yeah, some okay. of it was coming. That's still high, but we'll we'll. we'll. Do you have a question on yeah. that? No. Okay. Um, the other thing I noticed is that the playground size and equipment has changed from what was in the grant to addendum three. Um, do you see this as being a problem with the grant where you change the equipment and the description of what you said you were going to do? Example that, what, what example? 
Well, the teeter, teeter totter was taken out, the bench was put in. It's a different type of nature. Okay. And the size was changed from 1,630 square feet to 1,270. Of the lot size? Of the playground size. No, not at all. Okay. Sir, you minutes, five minutes. Have you got anything else to add? Uh, I can bring the rest up in council if I'm on at city council, but uh, if I could use 30 seconds more. Right. Um, I was going to say thank you for posting the plans on the website. It helped a lot. Uh, did anybody notice that on the plans there are four parking lot ballots and only three on the bid sheet? So expect a change order for that one. The uh, Plans called for a 30 gallon, uh, always on energy sucking 30 gallon electric water heater. I think this is a perfect application for an on demand water heater. The city recently paid $900,000 contract to improve the energy efficiency of nine buildings. This is the exact type of recommendation that they give you, and we paid them to tell us we should do it up front. Thank you for your time. Anyone else? Um, my name is Kira Twitza and I live in the neighborhood that connects uh, Bicentennial and I'm also the captain of the Bicentennial Park Association Neighborhood Watch. Um, I have a petition here with uh, 413 signatures on it showing the people's support of the park and the proposed plans as designed. Um, from what we've been told it will be a nature park and we've seen the plans ourselves and everyone I spoke to is, is very excited about this. Um, we picture, you know, not only ourselves as neighbors using it, but Lindenwood students, faculty. I mean, we're very excited about this park. Um, our neighborhood watch is also involved in the September 8th, 9-11 National Day of Service. Um, we're going to build a variety of housing for birds, butterflies, bats um, to help or to place in the park. Um, I've also spoke to um, some of the Girl Scouts, and they've already got plans and projects going for their patches and stuff to get at that park. Um, as neighbors, we've cleaned up a lot of trash back there in the past, I would say, three years or more. It's been a, a lot more um, with a growing number of bomb camps that were, were appearing there. Um, they were bringing drugs and crime to our area. We were picking up, you know, a lot of trash and, and bad things back there. Um, We've cleaned it up. We've, the, the police obviously has helped us quite a bit clean it up. Um, but leaving this area like it is will just keep drawing a bad element to the area. And, you know, we fear that the neighborhood will eventually die. Um, we see the park as the gem of this neighborhood and uh, to be a magnet for those looking to put roots down in Belleville. Um, on a final note, um, in regards to the petitions that a couple of aldermen presented, uh, the petition to abort the park was not signed by one person who lived in our neighborhood. Um, 56 people signed the go forward with the park, and over 30 of those signatures live within a five block radius of the park. So I think that kind of speaks loud and clear of what the people, you know, want. Um, please don't waver on the city's plans to continue the Bicentennial Park Project which has already been unanimously approved by the city council in November of 2009. Do you want the... Do you have a copy for each one? I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. 400 and... Carrie, can you tell us the dates those petitions were gathered at the city church? They don't all have dates on them because the ones I originally like, created was the same day as the uh, meeting at the park. They're recent. Yeah. The last few oh yeah, they're okay. all within since yeah. Um, I actually, which is kind of weird, I actually had the petition made up before that meeting was even called, which was kind of weird. Do you want the? Um, can I take a copy of this one, the story yeah. you just gave me? Yeah, that's fine. And then I'll send it in to you guys. Just give uh, the, the secretary here for this, and then you said it's 413 plus that. Right. Thank you. Uh huh. Anyone else? Speak on anything, the three projects that we've got this evening. Hearing none. Approval of the minutes from July 16th meeting. Um, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion. No. 
Brown Ludwig. You need second? I'll second. Second by all the line. All in favor? There's a correction on the last page, uh, page three of three, and that's the making a motion in my view. Okay. Uh, he says on the last page, page three of three, it has all of the be making a motion. He wasn't here that night, right? Oh, so that has to be. Does somebody remember who made that motion? I think I did. Okay, I did. Okay. <laughs>
So this project will not start until we have that. And you defined shortly it's coming. What, what do you base that opinion on? Um, based on the conversations we had with the Department of Natural Resources, um, the guy that's um, handling the permit, he was gone on vacation all last week, so we did not have a chance to get to our permit. Okay. Why did we just apply last week? Uh, no, we, 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 uh, we applied um, many months ago. Um, Jerry, if you could add any more to that. We applied November of 2011. IDNR is, uh, has a slow process. and we Clearly. Did, we, well, it's a state agency, and they, they reviewed it, they sent us comments, we addressed the comments, we sent it back. So we, it's in the final stages. Right. Unless they find something else. So we're in here on a special call meeting for something that cannot even go forward because it's out of our control. It's pending approval with the IDNR permit. This is just one of the steps that we have to go through. Um, we have to get the, the contractor approved and, and, and get moving with that. But okay, okay, if this has been applied for since last November, why are we here in August on a special night to do something we can't even, we can't even break ground? And that was only one of the permits we don't have. We have the permit from the IEPA to move forward with this project. We're and we have a verbal agreement with Ameren, or we have a written contract with Ameren? Well, from what Jerry said, we have a verbal agreement that we can move forward with this project. Okay, I'm sorry, that's not good enough for me. I think we need it in writing. We've made too many mistakes and inconvenienced too many people because we jumped the gun. This is a disaster waiting to happen again. We, have, we had an agreement with um, Ameren, but Ameren changed names, okay? So that's why, now that we're getting started with the project, they want to, to update the, the easement. It's gone through the um, review of your attorney, and so all they're doing is changing the paperwork. They gave us, it, it's, it's not just verbal, it's in an email, that we can start construction in the same way that they're allowing 17th Street to go across their easement. It's, it's exactly the same thing they consider it. Um, so, you know, it's, it's the same thing we did when we started the 17th Street project. And this is not a delay to the public, traveling public, because there is no traveling public on this piece of property. And, and also, when we brought this to committee a week or two ago, at the time, the conversation from IDNR was that we are within days <coughs> Uh, we didn't know the man was going on vacation, but we were very close to getting the final uh, per permit. Um, if we thought we were miles apart, we wouldn't we wouldn't be. But as as you mentioned, once the contractor is approved, they have several days or a week or so of due diligence, get their bonds, uh, get their project labor agreement signed, and and uh, so we believe we have every reason to believe that we're going to have the IDNR permit in a matter of days. And that will give the contractor time to finish his due diligence, and we can still get this project done in a timely fashion by the December date. Well, with all due respect, Mr. Mayor, that's exactly what we thought about the railroad well, permit, well, and it we, didn't and work out. And we explained to you that the railroad changed a long multitude of employees, lawyers and engineers, and what was approved originally was changed. Correct, Tim? Yes. It was a whole different set of, it's not exactly what you're trying to make it out. We had approval originally. They changed a lot of employees midstream, and their new legal group and their new group of engineers came back to our attorney and our engineers and said, time out, we don't like what the prior group did, and we're changing this. And you're dealing with, in that case, the railroad. And that's where we got into a long struggle, and there was a lot of people who weren't up to speed on the project. They were all new. That was a unique situation. We did nothing wrong there but it was a very cumbersome situation. But I that disagree. A, I believe we did do something wrong by well, breaking ground before we had the permit. You have the right to, you you have the right to disagree. And we're, this is exactly the same principle. Yes. I understand the circumstances are different, but the principle is the same. We are going forward without the permission of higher authorities. Would you answer the questions about the ballards and the water heater and the playground equipment or the area shrinking? Uh, I, I, I can't answer that.
questions about the, the bollards of the the, the, yeah. the bollard number changed because Cameron called us right a couple days before you asked us for a revised plans, and they said, what, would you consider putting another bollard on? So, I mean, that's just a recent change that, that Amarin, when they are reviewing for the permit, to sign the permit, they said, can you add another bollard? So that's what I was saying. Okay, I thought he said we went from four to three. And you're saying add, and that sounds like subtract to me. Well, I didn't say that. Okay, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Okay, and, and the water here I thought was an excellent point. Well, we have paid somebody to come in here and tell us how to be more energy efficient. Why didn't we learn our lessons? We certainly reviewed that, you know. But the water heater was all part of that building, right? right. It was all part of the specs of that particular building. And, uh, you know, um, we can ask that question, but it was specced into the building that the, the bathroom. So, and that's a standard in the past. It's a standard of what we've had. Okay. Actually, no. it's, a, it's an option sheet is what it is, and that's the only option. If you want hot water, this is your choice. I need to ask about it. Because we're buying the building as a whole, what you're saying? What's that? Because we're buying this building as a whole Correct. It's thing. It's I mean, it comes with the toilets and everything. Right, it's right. Package package. 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 Okay, and the size of the playground shrinking? We just changed the point. That's just a, we just, when we, when you put a grant out, we kind of put what we kind of like, but that's not even in the final form, so we just. It's your best guess at the time? Yeah. Okay. Everything else, 
and, and there's a nothing hidden. You certainly could have asked any of these questions many months ago, and, and I don't have it right here at my fingertips. But Debbie, do you remember the watershed vote and, and some of these things this council has voted on before, and some of these people here, but right? But we're told. Oh, hold it. Is that correct, Debbie? I mean, you know, we, we've had, if you look at the timeline here, uh, these votes have been passed numerous times. We had to vote as a council to accept the Kimball Trust. We had to vote to go after the grant for, for the Metro East. We had to accept it. We, we, we've had a couple of budgets. This has been in the budget now in 2010, 11, and 12 about Kimball Plaza and Bicentennial Park. This is not new information. And, and we've had numerous, and we, and we explained the watershed study. The watershed study was necessary to go after any grants for that park, or like any park, but it was also necessary for the 17th Street uh, Bellow Crossing project. We had to have the watershed study, and you're well aware, you were well versed and tuned in about how the flooding was, uh, that one spring, I forget the exact date, Tim, that we had all the water that was involved in Mr. Cordes' property, which we eventually bought out. So these are not things that have been hidden, and the council has voted on all of these. Um, it was approved in the April 2nd uh, city council meeting. I asked for to start get, receiving the minutes of the parks board meeting. And, and Debbie and I talked about that, Jim, this week. We don't have a problem with that. Okay, I haven't, never been, been getting, I, never realized, I haven't been getting that. Well, they, they agree with me. When they were in my office this past Thursday, that or Friday, whatever morning it was, that from now on, they will make sure that's happened. No one's ever asked before. It was not done intentional. I did. Well, okay, I apologize. But, I I did. Wish you would have... but the idea of it is, you say we hear all this stuff. We don't. So then I emailed this afternoon. I was wondering if Mr. Schneider is going to be at the Streets and Grades meeting tonight. If so, I was wondering if he could bring all the minutes from the Bicentennial Park meeting that also. I have not received the regular minutes since May. So, I mean, it's not that we don't ask. Everybody wonders why we ask so many questions. Well, this is why. Because here it is in writing. I ask for them, and then I don't get them. So whose responsibility would you say that is? I think it's your responsibility to ask a second time. Now, you're wasting our time here, folks. If you really wanted to know this, you could have called the mayor and said, Mayor, I need this. You've never you called. You have to yeah. actually we, we communicate. Call, we email, and emails get sometimes lost in junk emails. I mean, you know, what happened to picking up the phone and just calling and asking? And we have no record of that. That's a two-way street. And well, that's the point we're trying to make. It was your obligation to inform us of the ongoing projects. And that did not happen. And you know what? I disagree with you. I, I think we did a good job of letting everybody's appetite about what was going on. And we've had numerous votes along the way. Um, I'd like to call for a question. Street. Would you remind us 
again the blocks this covers? Pardon me? What part of 23rd Street are we talking about? This is from West Main up to the railroad tracks. Okay. This is going to get a three lane section that will taper down to two as you get to the railroad tracks. On South 23rd. On South 23rd. On South, okay. This this is next a, to the crime line. This is in between the crime line and the lane. Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you. When's this project to start? Uh, if, if we get this approved tonight, uh, it usually takes about two weeks. Um, to get the, the bonds and the, the contract signed, um, but we, we hope to get this started probably within the next three weeks. Why are we going to wait till after the building was completed to well, we, construction? We, and uh, we, we've been working with uh, Lindenwood and, uh, and the crime lab, the, the contractor, um, and um, that, that is the main goal. Um, they, they, they had planned on having the, the crime lab open by the, the spring of next year. Uh, we will have a pre-construction meeting and invite everybody in, involved in the project to, to make sure that we're not going to start this roadway project before they have moved um, all their heavy equipment in and out. They, they said, indicated to us they could use West Main Street as the entrance point now, right. but they've hauled all the concrete for that massive hole and, and basement. Uh, all those yards of concrete have been now done. A big part of the steel has already been delivered on site. Uh, and, and the rest they indicated that they felt they could do it from the Main Street entrance. Well, just as Oliver Schneider asked for, I mean, we're going to have something in writing that says that they're going to only use West Main Street? We, we could get that, yeah. If, if we're not going to have them drive heavy equipment on our new roadway. And uh, they're going to have to meet legal loads anyway because they have to use city streets leading up to this project um, and state highways. So they, they have to legal loads anyway. Yeah, but it seems like an inconvenience to have you pulled directly onto Main Street. Are they waiting for the concrete to cure? It appears not much is going on now. Is that, do you know what? I haven't had an update from them. Okay. But, um, when we have the pre-construction meeting, usually within the next two weeks, um, everybody will be at the table and um, that's when um, it would be an opportunity to, to, to find out their timeline what's going on. Okay, and, and what is our timeline? Why are we wanting to do this now? Well, when, when they had talked about uh, having a, a spring opening, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't, well, the, the, city, the city didn't feel that you know, we should have a, a roadway project you know, still being worked on as they're having their ribbon cutting. Um, it, was, it, was, it was done, it was, this was moved up to get the roadway finished so it would be a complete project. So okay, so the goal was to get finished, the building and the road basically done at the same time. Yeah, get it, get it all finished. Okay, and, and when you say everybody comes to the table, I assume that includes Lindenwood and their concern about student parking and all that kind of thing. Yeah, Lindenwood um, it comes to the table, the, the crime lab people, the, the contractor and the, the consultant that is working with the crime lab. Um, and yeah, anybody's welcome. Okay, and does this involve the railroad in any way, or does this stop no, prior to the crossing? Yeah, right, we're going up to the railroad, so okay. we're, we're, we got the railroad out of this. Anyone else? Need a motion for the improvement by 23rd Street for right away 254,668. Second. Second. Roll call. Alderman Hull? Aye. Alderman Hart? Aye. Alderman Ludwig? Aye. Alderman Schneider? Aye. Alderman Kinsella? Aye. Alderman Orland? Aye. Alderman Silby? Aye. Motion carries. Aye. Four aye. Yes, aye. East Washington Coupler. Okay. Uh, the East Washington Coupler. Uh, this is a, a, a emergency repair program funds that we got from the state a couple of years ago. Uh, the, the state um, was able to get us two hundred sixty-eight thousand um, dollars towards this project, and they were emergency repair funds. Um, we've been working with IDOT uh, with the plans. Um, last year, we had planned on getting this out on the street. Um, we had a, a public meeting in uh, May. 
of 2011 to lay out the plans to the residents and uh, business owners uh, in this area. Um, so we got the, the approval to, to go ahead and bid this project, um, but it, it got late in the season last year that we decided that um, we didn't want to have open holes um, during the winter time. So we opted to, to move this to the spring of this year to get the project going. Uh, so at the beginning of the year, we, we got approval to go ahead and bid this. Um, and during that time, uh, the historic preservation has had come back and questioned. Um, the first thing that they questioned was the trees. Um, why did we have to remove the trees? And for obvious reasons, um, there was sometimes there was four to six inches of, of trip and falls due to, to roots. Um, so that was one of their concerns. Um, their other concern was that um, the, when the project started, the, the project plans laid out to the business owners. We had we were replacing everything with concrete. Uh, at that time, there was probably 25 percent. Um, brick in the historic district, and 75% uh, was concrete. Um, so to, when, we, when we put the plans together, we, to, to make a uniform um, product, um, we um, had all concrete going back, um, and concrete curb going back. Well, the historic preservation, they first started with the trees, and they're okay with the trees. We're, we're putting the same trees um, that we did on the streetscape. They came back. They did not want us to put concrete where there was brick. So there's a letter in your packet uh, that gives the final recommendations from uh, the historic preservation, stating that wherever there's brick, they want brick to be put back. And um, they're allowing us wherever there's concrete. Actually, we can put concrete back. Uh, and in their first couple letters. They had said that they wanted the uh, sandstone curb put back. Um, after looking throughout the area, we did not find a sandstone curb that matched what was out there. So in the letter, they allowed us to put in a sandstone colored curb. Uh, so the, the changes um, um, I, you have in front of you today is um, the trees were already part of the contract. The only thing that's not part of the contract was having the brick sidewalk and the colored curb. And I provided a spreadsheet uh, that shows the, the difference in the pricing um, and the difference in the quantities. Uh, and and the, the difference in the price, I know it, it, it says um, up to $125,000, uh, but that was an estimate. After going through and looking what's out there and the prices that we have in the contract, uh, the difference is coming to 106500 uh, in order to put in the brick where there was brick and to um, put in the historic colored curb. So I'm just asking that we uh, go with the wishes of the historic preservation. I have a question. Sure. Is this going to be done as a change order or will this be a separate contract? Um, this is done as a, as a change order. Hanks, Hanks is the is the contractor on this, and, and as you know, Hanks um, did the streetscape um, downtown Belleville. Um, they do quality work and um, they, they work with the colored curbing and the sidewalk. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that Hanks will do a good job. Mr. Chairman, questions? Do we have? I'm sorry. Um, I called earlier today to see if I could get the minutes of the <coughs> special meetings. Offered. And I was told there are none. So maybe there was no meeting. I think to stop this, I think what we need to do when we have any kind of meeting, public hearings or anything, there should be minutes reported. I do have the attendance sheet that shows you first off the list. Yes, but what I'm saying is, when I ask for the minutes, there are none. There should be minutes. So in order to stop the, the sandstone curve, there should be minutes. 
saying, okay, we're, you know, when was the meeting? Or, we have minutes if they would have been recorded. There was nothing, I mean, you don't know what was all said or anything. Well, it, it, it was a... Uh, it it's was, a suggestion that I think we should start to do for public hearings. We should have minutes. No, there are no minutes. It was a public informational meeting and we did not find the minutes today. Uh, I'm not saying that there are minutes, but uh, that was uh, my secretary uh, is different than it is now at that point. Uh, I'm not saying there are minutes, but uh, we did not find the minutes today. And, um, and this was a Well, it's in the computer. All you have to do is hit. It should come up, right? People file things different ways. Mr. Chairman, this morning I think many of you in this room were here at this meeting. It was made clear that night, Bill, that our intention was to use concrete and not brick because we of We have no proof. If there was minutes, we would have the proof. We need to start doing things the proper way, not only by word of mouth or if there's minutes, then we have the proof. You say, here it is. It's recorded. Okay, but what do our own ordinances require as far as replacing brick with brick? But in, in the street, if, if, if the street is full <coughs> up, um, the ordinance says that the street has to be put back in brick. Uh, okay. A lot of times, we don't have a surplus of brick. Uh, to the, street the, the, streets. the street was already overlaid many years ago. Right. right, it's still brick underneath, but... Okay, yeah. but the point, my point is, I did speak to you about brick. It is recorded in the January meeting minutes of this committee. I don't know why we're acting like this is a shock or a surprise that we got caught doing something again we shouldn't be doing. We knew the right thing to do and we chose the most expedient, cheapest thing to do. Mark, does a revised price include a credit for the, from Hanks? It's not listed. Well, I mean, the, the credit is that there's, um, there'll be less concrete sidewalk as, as we put in. And, and that's what I, that reflects, the credit reflects there. You can see that the quantity has gone down. Um, I don't have the original bid from. Well, I did give the original quantity of concrete sidewalk uh, was 23,326. And that 2,500 uh, brick is subtracted from that. himself to, to, to do the curbs. So the colored curbing is in, but Hanks knows that he can only be paid contract price. Uh, he chose to put in the curbs because uh, there is a number of things that happen. The, the tree boxes have to be put in, um, the sidewalk has to be put in according to ADA. So some sidewalk is in though. Yeah, where yeah, where the where the concrete um, was before. Um, that's where we put concrete back. Um, the, 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 the sections that you see left out are the brick sections. Okay. And do you know how he's laying that? Is he putting concrete under it for a foundation? Is he putting rock and sand under it? Do you know? The, the, the price that we have here, um, because there are still some mature trees in the area um, that roots, uh, there is going to be a concrete base with sand put on top. Okay. And then what are you going to put between the brick? Are you going to sand between the bricks? Well, yeah, there's going to be sand spread over the top of the mm -hmm. bricks. Mm -hmm. And then you brush it in. Brush it in, yeah. That's that's what's going to lock it in place. I move we approve this change order. I'll second it. Move the hold. I'll second the hold. Schneier, roll call. Open hold. Aye. Open heart. Aye. Open Ludwig. Aye. Open Schneider. Aye. Open Kinsella. Aye. Open Harlan. Aye. Open Phil Sillesby. Aye. Merrick. Aye. Careful. Oh, yeah, what do you 
to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.